What's up guys? Welcome back, man. Today is the day we are out here at Fun and Sun Boats. They hooked it up hardcore with literally a two-day turnaround on our boat modifications, man, and we did get a lot done. Stay tuned, boys. We're going in here to take care of the bill, and we are going to tell you all about this, do a full walk around, give you the tour, man. We decked this thing out. Old trolling motor. All right, man. She's locked and loaded, ready to go. I almost don't want to give you a peek. We're going to take this thing somewhere and show you guys everything we just got done. Cannot wait. Let's go. All right, man, here it is, what you've all been waiting for, dudes. I didn't have enough time to get out yesterday and showcase everything, but today we're gonna do a full walk around, give you guys the guided tour of our actually $8,000 in upgrades on this boat. We are in love with everything that got done. I'm gonna show you guys right now, let's go. All right, y'all, let me give you the full list, man, of what we got done. Okay, so the parts total was $6,591, labor total $880, sales tax $468, a little bit of city or local tax, 150 bucks, grand total 8109. Is it worth it? We're gonna tell you if this is either gas or trash, man, I am pumped. This is the latest stuff to hit the market, some of the most highly anticipated products, man. This trolling motor that we got is supposed to be putting the Ultrex out of business. Like, um, this is what other people are saying, not me. We're about to find out, boys. So just to start things off, Devin and I, of course, took this boat out with uh, the stock trolling motor, just basically the standard one. We bought this boat with a budget in mind, knowing that if we paid X number of dollars, we'd still have the budget left to get these electronics that we wanted, the trolling motor that we wanted. And of course, we spent you know a couple extra pennies than we had anticipated, but not by a whole lot. So the trolling motor, you guys know, Devin and I have taken this boat out a couple days now. It's been very windy. And the trolling motor, that 70 Maxim by Minn Kota, uh, I mean, it had to be on full blast to even get us moving kind of like upwind which could be expected but uh, this guy right here but now we're running the Garmin force man that's the trolling motor we got a much more powerful unit brushless motor supposed to be way more quiet way more efficient uh, some guys had talked about lag between the pedal and like uh, what's actually happening on the units so, like let's say you st tell it to go right or tell it to go left it, it's a little laggy well we had got ours hardwired in and so they actually did that for us at fun and sun Shane really took care of us man like our two Garmin units were uh, not supposed to be able to be compatible and speak to each other like share waypoints share the live view that we have purchased and I'll tell you more about in a second but uh, he made it happen he kind of tore the boat apart dude he routed some wires through some places that are probably not usual and got it done so uh, because this is the RT 188 P the padded hole I guess that padding uh, makes it very difficult to get the to get the wires routed the proper way and also the uh, tubing that they supply there's a large port that goes to connect the two pieces together uh, I think it's by an Ethernet cable if I'm not mistaken well that tube was not big enough and so they weren't able to use that to do the routing for the wires so let me tell you more about this. Let's take a look at these things. So a much larger trolling motor unit. I can't wait to actually get this out tomorrow and show you guys what it's capable of because we haven't even done the real world test yet. So give us until tomorrow, man. We are gonna put this thing through the ringer. We're gonna see exactly what it can do. We got spot lock now, boys. This is <laughs> this is exciting. We were literally working that 70 Maxim to the bone uh, and it did a great job. But the thing is we want spot lock. You know, what if I wanna retire? What if we're drifting into some reeds, some rocks, something dangerous? You wanna be able to spot lock your location just a little further out. We don't have poles. We don't have power poles on the boat, so uh, the spot lock is a must for us. Now, there's a lot of motors that do spot lock. Why did we choose this over something like the, uh, I know there's the Lowrance Ghost. I know that there's the Ultrex, of course. The Ultrex was what I had on my mind, but now with uh, Garmin doing the Panoptics Live Scope and this new perspective mount that we just got that I think is only released in this last week or month, it's gonna be a complete game changer, you guys. I cannot wait. Look, look, check this out. So we've got a 10 inch Garmin unit up front. This is the 102 SV. We were gonna get the 106, but apparently the only difference is the map card that comes with the 106 and it's like $200 cheaper to get the 102. They had this in stock and not the 106, but they had the map card, which is the only difference. So we paid the exact same price and apparently we get a $200 rebate on that map card. So we got the 102 instead of the 106 SV, but it's supposed to be cheaper and have the same functionality. So no losses there. Check this thing out. Garmin Force got the cable holder right there. It's got a lift assist that makes it very nice and easy to pull out of the water. We're gonna to demonstrate tomorrow. Here's what's new with the Panoptics Live Scope though, is this mount right here that allows you to adjust the transducer here so that you can actually see a wider, a wider area in front of you and it's geared for more shallow water. So that's gonna be fantastic. A lot of people are using the Live Scope right now for deep waters, uh, stumps, rocks, ledge, whatever, what have you. But now we can go ahead and get into some shallower cover and it sounds like it's gonna perform very well like in places around docks, things of that nature. It's gonna be completely 
sick, dude. So the perspective mount, we just got that piece. That was like an extra $140 to get it to mount to the motor to where you can adjust the piece there. We are gonna demonstrate that tomorrow when we take it out, so be looking out. 93 SV on the back, and of course, we got it to where they can communicate to each other, so they're gonna be able to share those waypoints and live view screens and all that. So on the foot pedal, you got your steering, your go button, adjust the power. We got the spot lock like we needed. I believe this is the, what the hell is that button? Where you just keep going in the direction you're facing, right? <laughs> we also got this guy right here, which you plug into the motor in the back. You can download an app and it will show you all the info about your boat as far as like say hours ran, when the service is needed, uh, what parts need to be looked at, um, all the way up to like the speed you're traveling, different things of that nature, it looks super sick. We also asked if they can install a couple of different USB ports. So we've got dual USB ports in the front and back here at the console. There's some inside the coin box too, We've got all the charging potential we need now. We can have GoPros tethered to like uh, different tripods, monopods, GoPro mounting brackets all over this boat and we can have them charging as we go so we don't have to change out batteries or use a portable battery charger. That's gonna be good. Also, charge devices like the phones, things of that nature. I mean, like I said, there is some in the coin box here, but these are gonna be readily available, so check this out. Here we go with the first two USBs. Boom, right there on the console. Let me take you up front though. Here is the other two. Bada bing, bada boom, man. USB is ready to go. So all in all, guys, let me run through these mods for you guys. We got the 50-inch shaft Garmin Force. We didn't get the larger ones. Bass boat, lower to the water. No need for that length. So we got the 50-inch there. The Garmin 102 SV at the bow with the Panoptics perspective view. Install the dual USB chargers, bow and console. Mount the graph at bow on deck. So they also installed this mount on here for us to uh, hold the Garmin unit because this... Uh, deal right here that's new for 2020 that I told you guys we wouldn't be using it's exactly right this thing only supports nine inch units this being 10 inches was a little bit too big for that space so it's kind of like uh, hashtag pointless it looks great with that mount so we could care less let's go ahead and tell you about the rest I want to see if I can show you guys this vessel view thing let me turn on the boats power real fast There we go. So now with the power on, you'll see there's a blue light on the USB showing that they're active and uh, ready to go. All right, let me see if I can download this app now and get this thing figured out because it looks very dope. Vessel view, three out of five stars with 68 reviews. I don't know. All right, let's open the app, man. Vessel view would like to use Bluetooth. I assume I have to agree. Heck yes, yeah, sign in with Facebook. I love it when I see that, man. Live engine data requires a vessel view mobile module to be installed, which we have. So let me hit connect. I bet you I need to turn the key on. Try that again. Oh, there it is, boom. Just gotta have the key in the on position. Number of engines, one. Fuel tank capacity, it would ask me that. Okay, let me Google this. Oh, cool, 23 gallons, that was easy, wow. You have not selected a preferred dealer, pick one now. We found her, ladies and gentlemen, fun and sun. It shows you your RPM if the boat was on, shows you how fast you're going, how many gallons you've got left in the tank, I assume just if it's running. All right, how do we go to? maintenance okay so here's what i really wanted to show you guys check this out this is the maintenance page it shows you that we have 1.6 hours on the engine and it shows you when all the services are due it shows that in 98 hours all these services are due and you know roughly um, 300 total hours these services are due spark plugs this app is pretty legit um, just to, if, if nothing else, to check for your maintenance. It was really not that much to add this thing on, so we decided to get that done. This thing is ready to rock and roll, boys. We are gonna take this thing out tomorrow, be looking out, because uh, it's gonna be a ton of fun. We're gonna put this thing to use. One of the last things to remember is taking this puppy off. We had the cover on the boat yesterday, and actually while driving, the uh, cover pushed this down hard enough to knock this unit off. Holy shite. All right, now let's grab this guy right here. Get him taken care of, put him in the truck. We'll get home and then toss her in the garage. There goes the covers. I wonder if I can catch a fish on the new reel too. Probably over here by the grass. Oh yeah, if I had to guess, that's the spot. Oh, yep, there he is. Got him. That was easy. Oh, came off. Almost had him up here, guys. Maybe I should grab another Sanko. Okay, let's try that again. I got some cinnamon lunker logs in the truck. I think this is a five inch too. This could get bit real quick. That was a uh, watermelon red flake. Six. Let's see what happens. Nice. Oh, I think he's got it. There he is. He's got it. Come on in. Gotcha. All right. Nice one right before sunset. Oh, and there he goes. All right, y'all, there we have it. Got us one right before sunset. On the old Lunker Log, we actually got that spinning reel from Fun and Sun when we went and picked up the stuff, 30 bucks. So, new spinning combo. Let's get him back in the water. 
What an awesome night, man. New parts, can't wait to use LiveScope. Let's go.